first one for this little group here. Proud of these uh, guys and girls. They've uh, worked very hard. And we've had about 15, 16 lessons in now for this semester. And uh, I think you'll like seeing the progress that they've made. Hopefully they've been playing some songs around the house you start recognizing, you know. It's like, oh, I, I know that song. <laughs> So uh, we've done it quite a bit. We're going to be doing, uh, this is kind of like an informance, I guess you would call it. So it's an informational, informal performance. So we're going to perform some things for you. Uh, then they're going to recital style, kind of play by themselves a little bit for you. And the first thing we're going to do is just kind of show you what we've been doing and the process we've been gone through to learn and what we've been learning here in the guitar class. So first, we just had to learn some basic things like how do you hold the guitar? <laughs> which end goes which way? Uh, how do you hold the pick? Uh, how do you plug the guitar in? Uh, which, what do all these knobs and switches do? Uh, how do I tune this thing? You know, what, how do I pluck the strings? Do we go up? Do we go down? Or you know, what do we do? There's all these just little things that we have to work on. How to you know, how to sit properly? How to stand properly? Uh, how to adjust everything? How to use the amplifier? How to turn it on? What do all the millions of knobs do on this thing and all that kind of stuff? So uh, once we got through all of those things and actually got down to some playing, we have basically learned two different ways to read some notation to do music. Um, most of you people are probably familiar with the music staff, which is what uh, the international language of music is usually written on. Five lines, four spaces, the music staff, the grand staff. And so we've been uh, learning to read some songs on the music staff for the guitar, but also guitarists use uh, something called tablature, or tabs for short. So people that play string instruments probably know about tabs. So they kind of kind of go into both worlds. So we're going to show you a little bit of what we learned in both of those worlds so far. So first thing we did on the music staff is we started off with just three notes, kind of like we did when they were learning the recorder. We just started off with three little notes, and we learned about three songs, just using three notes and just plunking out those three notes on one string on the guitar, just getting used to getting this, this hand to cooperate and work with the other hand. It's kind of like the patting your head, rubbing your belly thing. You've got two different motions happening at the same time, which is different from other instruments, whereas a piano it's the same motion, woodwinds, it's the same motion, the fingers on the guitar, it's different motions are happening at the same time. So that's why string instruments, including violin, viola, cellos, and basses, it takes a little bit slower at the beginning, and then once they get it, they can run, because that muscle memory kicks in, which is an amazing thing. So we learned E, F, and G. There they are on the music staff where they live, just on the high E string. We said about three songs or so. Let's play an E, F, G for everybody. One, two, ready, play. There they were, so like I said, we played three little songs and got familiar with just plunking away and reading those notes on the music staff for their guitar. And then we quickly added in another string so that they had to negotiate between two strings, moving up and down with their hand and with their pick. And we added in the notes B, C, and D on the B string, which is right above that E string. So let's play a B, C, D for everybody. One, two, ready, play. So then we had six note songs that we were playing, and we did another three songs using these six notes. So now we've already kind of covered some, some about six songs already. And now we're negotiating strings up and down. That's tri tricky at first, tricky at first. And then once they felt like they felt like they had that down pretty good, we moved on and we added in another string. So now they had three strings. We're up to the G string. We added in two notes, G and A, and we had eight note songs. And with those, we did five more songs using the eight notes there and negotiating three strings. So let's play a G and an A. One, two. Ready, play. Very good. And then recently we've added in a couple of sharps. Back on the high E string and the B string, we added in an F sharp and the C sharp. Let's play those for them. One, two, ready, play. And then actually even beyond this chart on here, recent, even more recently, like within the last week or so, we've added in low D, E, and F on the fourth string up, which is the D string. So they've got some songs they've been negotiating 
using four strings, so with the F sharp and C sharp in there, and if you're a music person and you know your scales, once we have that F sharp in there, you'll know that we now have enough notes to do a major scale in those first four little frets there at the head of the guitar. And so we're going to play up, this is our first major scale, they're in first position, and we're going to play up and then back down for you, it'll be a very familiar sound. One, two, ready, play. <laughs> They were really happy to see how that worked when we got to the song Joy to the World. It's a G major scale backwards at the very beginning. G, F sharp, B, D, C, B, A, G. It's just a very good song to show you how they use scales to make up songs. They're just jumping around. It gives kind of like a cheat sheet to know what notes are going to sound good in that key. And so we had in total 15 songs that we've covered so far using notes on the music staff and covering four out of six strings. And we've basically been staying within the first four frets of the guitar and that first position area up by the head for reading on the music staff. Now that would not be good to just stay there and only play right there, some guitarists do, but you want to really get up and down the neck and get moving up and down the neck of the guitar and cover more frets. So for that, we use our tab song. And that gets us going up and down the guitar and get it out of that little first position, first four frets up there, and moving around and playing things. Now tabs, short for tablature, it looks a little different than the music staff. You'll notice right away there are no music notes. It's just a bunch of numbers on a bunch of lines. And it looks kind of like a music staff, but if you notice, there are six lines instead of five lines. And that's because this is actually, the lines are a picture of the strings on their guitar. So this is kind of a picture way of looking at your music. And the numbers, they correspond to the frets, which are the little things that look like measures, divided up by little fret bars, on their guitars. So eight would mean the eighth fret. And then a certain one of those lines corresponds with a certain string on their guitar. Now when we learn how to tune their guitars, they had to learn the names of the strings so they know what to, know to tune the guitars to. So what's our little sentence that we had to remember? You can say it. <laughs> That's right. Starting with low E, Ed, A, dynamite, goodbye, Ed. E, A, D, G, B, E. So once they knew that little crazy sentence, they could remember the names of their strings, tune the guitars to the proper notes, and that helped us when we started reading tabs. And so we have Ed, A, dynamite, goodbye, Ed. But as you'll notice, it's upside down from the way their guitar looks. And that drives guitarists crazy at first. And I've had a lot of guitar friends who play for years even ask me, they're like, what's the history behind that? Why in the world didn't they just put it the way that the guitar looks? Why didn't they put it up? Why didn't they put it upside down? And the reason for that is the music staff came first. And when you look at the music staff, the high notes go up and then the low notes go down. And if you have this thing flipped the other way, if you flip the tab the way the guitar actually looks, you're, when you get, as the notes get lower, they would go up and then as the notes go higher, they would go down, which would be the reverse of what the music staff looked like. And so guitarists had not used tabs, they've been using the music staff, so they didn't like that. So it's flipped upside down. So that high notes go up, low notes go down, and it follows the contour of the melody, just like the music staff does. And I prefer, like I tell them, to have my music on the music staff and then maybe have a tab also alongside. Most guitarists like that way. So, there's a tab, that's what it looks like. And so we learned that to use some, it's a good way to learn a song that you already know how it goes really fast. So it's not gonna give you the rhythm of the song most of the time, it's just gonna show you where to play the song. So if you know how the rhythm goes and you know how the song goes, then you just need to know where to put your finger and what string to pluck next to get the next note of the song. So this is a song that you will hear in its entirety in our May concert when we do the big rock and roll show up on the stage. This is a song called Sunshine of Your Love by the band Cream, one of my favorite guitar players of all time, Eric Clapton, the only guy who's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame three times. <laughs> <laughs> 
give his own wing, I guess. I don't know. He's in three different, three, as a solo artist and in two different bands. He's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He's awesome. And he, with his buddy, wrote this Sunshine of Your Love song. And like I said, we'll hear it. You'll hear them play the melody, the main riffs, background chords, bass lines, all of that kind of together. It's the nice thing about playing in a group is you can have people playing different parts at the same time and working together like that. So they're just going to play this. This is showing you a tab where you've got one note at a time, just like a melody type thing. So this is the opening riff on Sunshine of Your Love. Let's play it twice. One, two, ready, go. guitars playing the melodies and the bass lines and the power chords and everything in there and this main riff that you hear it's probably like the most famous rock and roll riff of all time here smoke on the water uh, so let's play it through twice so this shows you the numbers are stacked on top of each other so that they're making chords more than one note at a time one two ready go Chords are important. It's where you're playing more than one sound, one pitch at the same time, making some nice harmonies. We've done some full chords, and we do a lot of power chords at the beginning, maybe only two or three string type chords. And we've been using them. You'll hear some in some of the songs they're going to play in just a minute. So first, let's play an E5 power chord for them so they can hear what that sounds like. One, two, ready, play. sound familiar to you. It's very close to the blues scale, and it's a, a favorite scale of musicians to improvise with uh, when they're making up melodies or just playing a guitar solo with rock and roll music and rhythm and blues music, uh, country western music. It's a very popular scale to use. So we're playing it in the first position right now. Later on they're going to learn the movable version of this scale so they can play it in all keys possible and everywhere on their fretboard. That'll be coming up really soon after Christmas break. So right now we're going to play it from high to low and then put a big E5 chord at the end of it. We'll finish it off. One and two and ready and play and. Music in the key of E, and they each take. 
take turns improvising, using the notes of that scale, jumping around and making up stuff and playing, even kind of bending the strings a little bit, getting into that bluesy kind of bending the string thing. And they love that. They sit there and do that the whole time when you know, because they love doing that. And that's just another thing, emphasizing how that's how musicians make up their music. They use scales, and then they have chords that are made up of notes of that scale stacked on top of each other to be the background music. That's why all the notes of the scale will work with those particular chords, because the chords are made up of notes out of that same scale. There's music theory in a nutshell right there, I guess. And now we're going to use some of our chords, and we're going to play a little 12-bar blues background, similar to kind of what I did. Maybe mine's a little bit fancier, maybe. But uh, similar to what I do when they're improvising in the key of E using the E minor pentatonic scale. This is the 12-bar blues. This is going to sound really familiar to you because the 12-bar blues is really, that's, that's the beginning. That's the anchor. That's the backbone of all this modern music that we have today. Turn of the century, the blues starting down in New Orleans, this kind of 12-bar pattern in the background and it got chopped up and moved around and, and put together and, and made jazzier in the 1920s and 30s with the jazz bands. Always, somebody always said to me that jazz band is like hearing a really good blues band falling down the stairs as they play. <laughs> that kind of thing. So it's all based on the blues. Everything that's modern that we hear today, it's all that bending the notes and scooping in with the singing. And it's wonderful about the string instruments is you can do a lot of that. You can imitate what the voice can do. You can slide and glissando. You can bend the notes and all this kind of thing and really have a lot of expression in your playing with string instruments, so it's fun to do. So we're going to play the 12-bar blues in the key of E, and we put a little kind of fun ending on the ending there with our E7 chord. So, ready? exercises using different kind of muscles almost every day because they don't want your muscles to get used to what you're doing. So it's the same when I'm throwing a lot of different songs at you. If I just had two or three songs and we just kept playing them over and over again, they're not getting that, uh, they're not getting that uh, confusion of the muscle memory. And they're going to learn faster. They learn faster. It's just kind of building the muscles up. You want to do that with your workout. So they do, I do that by throwing a lot of different things in a lot of different places on the guitar. So we're going to play a couple of songs for you. And we're going to start with Jolly Old St. Nicholas. This is kind of my own little arrangement. I tried to kind of make it a little bit more rock, a little more pop with my arrangement here. So this is Jolly Old St. Nicholas.
um, my little arrangement of Jingle Bells, and you'll be able to hear that C power chord at the beginning and the end for our intro and coda. yourself playing with other musicians. <laughs> Very rarely all by yourself. So it's not much fun to do that. So it's more fun to play with your friends. And so they're going to be playing by themselves here though for a second. They are going to each uh, picked out two songs out of the many, many songs that we have covered. They picked out two that they're going to play by themselves. I'm going to kind of jump around in the program. Some of them are playing the same song, so I'll try to kind of cleanse our ear palate so we don't hear the same song like five times in a row or anything like that. So first we're going to start with Quinn, and he is going to play first Twinkle Twinkle Little Star for us. Speed record. 
<laughs> I can't get through this fast enough. <laughs> go fingers, go. All right, and next, some more songs about joy. Joy to the world.
back in. We'll start back in with these guys and girls. Just check your schedule. And you'll notice all the lightning bolts. If you're not one of the parents, you may not know about the lightning bolts. And those are, they earn those each time they can play one of those songs all by themselves in front of everybody else in the group without making any mistakes. They can earn a lightning bolt put on their guitar. So you see a lot of them. Some of them, like Quinn, he's got them on his workbook, which is covered with them. So he's not without them. And also, uh, uh, we have uh, Cooper down there has also got on his workbook. He's been sticking them on there as well. So uh, some of them, they put them on their guitar. Some of them, they put them on their workbook. So that's what those are about. So we'll probably see more lightning bolts when we get ready. So in May, we'll have a big rock and roll show. The chairs will be gone. We will be up on the stage. The amplifiers turned around, cranked up with microphones in front of them. So uh, lots of loud rock and roll music in May. They'll be standing up. No more music sheets in front of them. So it will be a different kind of experience. And you'll see, uh, hopefully, a big jump in their abilities from year until uh, at the end of the year. I've been very impressed with the work that they put in and how far they've come in such a short amount of time. And thank you again, parents, for signing them up and for supporting your kids' talents and interest in music by letting them be a part of that. Thanks. And let's give them a good